Okay, let's see action. So let's import some libraries. I'm going to use this data set that I've made up. It's the one I use in all the videos. And uh, let's take a look at it. So as usual, let's use str to see what's inside. Okay, so we have a couple of variables, a numerical one and a categorical one. Let's do some summary to see if we have some NAs. Not in this case, as you can see, we have some some class imbalance because we have 18 of no's and 31 yeses, but this is not the aim of this video. So let's follow this a little bit. And this is the one that you saw in the other videos. Okay, so we have some overlap here, but basically we have for low doses, we have death and for high doses, we have survival. So I'm going to call caret. I'm going to use a couple of methods, GLM of the family binomial. This is logistic regression and neural network using zero neurons in the hidden layer. So I have just one neuron. This is just a single logistic regression. And let me show you the output. And as I saw in the video, so the intercept of the logistic regression is minus 12.7 and the coefficient, the slope, the weight is 45. And if you plot the summary of the neural network, we have the same values. So the bias is minus 12, which is equivalent to, to the intercept. And the weight is 45, which is equivalent to the number proportional to the dose. So this is, explains why I was saying that in a neuron is more or less like a logistic regression. So this is a topology. So I have this output, the input, which is the dose, and we have the bias and a weight. Okay. So, so far, so good. So remember the sigmoid. So this is a function. I'm going to call this uh, for a given value. I'm going to use this bias, multiply the weight by the input, and then calculate one divided by one plus the exponential of minus this combination. Okay. So let me show you something. So this is the confusion matrix. Okay. Same results for logistic regression and neural network. This is because they are the same. And again, let's do some plotting. Forget about these parameters. These are related with the symbols and the size of the labels and so on and so forth. But basically this is not relevant here. And now I'm going to use some points. I'm going to take points from zero to 0.7, step by, uh, by 0.1. And then let's plot, call the activation function. And this is what I saw in the video. So for low doses, probability is zero. For high doses, probability is one. And in the middle, we have something like that. So we can now plot 100 points in this range. And you see this smooth line, which is the sigma function. OK, so far, so good. Now let's move to another data set. This is called those. Again, let's do some plotting. And now you can see that we have some intermediate region in which we have survival and something things are not working very well at the end, at the, at the extremes. So let's now compare three fittings, uh, logistic regression, neural network with just one neuron, an output neuron, and let's create a hidden layer with two neurons in, in the middle. Okay. Now the topology of the uh, of this neural network is like this. So the input is not connected to the output, but through uh, through these specialized neurons in, in the middle. Okay. So now we have, as you can see here, so a couple of biases: one for uh, the neuron, the hidden neuron number one, the other bias for hidden neuron number two the weights in each uh, neuron, and then we are combining them to, to, to the output. So as you can see here, the prediction is terrible for logistic regression. So we don't have any true negative and all, all the classification is yes. The same for the, the case in which you don't have any hidden layer. But when we introduce the hidden layer, things are going very nicely because now we have only three false uh, negatives and only three, only four false positives. So accuracy is pretty high, sensitivity is pretty high, uh, specificity and so on and so forth. So let's plot this. Again, this is our data set. This is the prediction of the logistic regression, which is absolutely garbage. This is the prediction of the neural network. It's almost overlap because basically both models are the same. And this is a prediction of the neural network that you can see this is not perfect. And it's not perfect, not because the neural network is not able to capture all the complexity, but because the data set has a lot of overlap here and there. So let's do this a little more smooth and, and, and try to understand what is happening here. So if we take the summary of the neural network, and again, we plug this into the activation function. So this is the output of hidden layer, num uh, hidden neuron number one. This is the output of hidden neuron number two. And this is the logistic combination of all of them. And, and again, we're reproducing the results in a very smooth way. 
And what if we have more neurons in the hidden layer? So instead of having just two, let's play with five. And as you can see here, the prediction is garbage, and this is a problem of overfitting. So the neural network is trying to specialize each neuron in different parts of the graph. This part is improved, but the cost of this is that we are trying to explain why we have these two points separately than these two ones. And this is, of course, not very interpretable, So and this fitting is really poor. What if we use three neurons? Let's copy this. Okay, let's duplicate this. Okay, this is the plotting. And now let's use three neurons in the hidden layer. Three and predict three. Oh, sorry. Okay, so let's train this. This is fast. Okay, this is uh, a little better. So I wouldn't say that the, the orange is better than the red. Probably it is, but we, we should go inside the details of the hidden layers. So as an exercise, I suggest to you that you use this fit uh, three and try to understand what is the output coming from all of these neurons. And that's all for today.